Hey, welcome back everyone. This is episode 3 of Homework 2. Um, today I'm just going to clean up a little bit of the code that I just wrote for log analysis. And then I will implement um, parse, which takes the entire file as a single string and returns a list of log messages. Um, so it parses the entire log file at once and again returns its contents as a list of log messages. <coughs> And they gave me a function that allows me to test um, whether or not it works. So, um, first and foremost, before moving on to implement new features, I'd like to um, do a small amount of cleanup. And that cleanup is just, I think I want to move this case into um, the patterns that I'm matching against. So this will become um, case i on x's and that will be simply parse info or warning message um, you know same call as before I'm just moving these patterns from a case statement or expression to the actual patterns of the function Okay, and it compiles. And I'll line this up here. And finally, um, I usually prefer to use dollar sign in the case that I just have one pair of parentheses, so I'll do that. And that is about all the cleanup I want to do. And I want to reiterate that, um, yes, of course it's possible to write parse error message much, much in a much fewer amount, uh, number of lines. Um, might look something like this. Error code const onto timestamp const onto messages equals Oops. So yes, you can write this entire, you know, twelve-line function in one line, um, but you know, whatever. Okay, so time to implement the parse function. Its signature is string to list of log message. So presumably, this string has a bunch of new line characters in it because it's literally the entire log file just as a single string, and there is a method in the prelude that splits a string on new lines into a list of strings and that function is called lines so once I have the log messages each on an individual line um, it's simply a matter of mapping parse message over the lines of the file um, so that's all I really have to say for today's episode. Um, and feel free to run test parse. All all it does is print to the console um, the top n lines of error log as log messages. So it's super ugly to read. Um, if you just do one, you'll see the log message of the of the top line. Um, but in the remaining time, I guess I'll go over the type signature of map and kind of how it works. It's really simple. So map takes a function from A to B, where A and B are polymorphic types. They can be any type, no constraints at all. The second argument is the list of A, and it returns the list of B. So you can almost guess what it's doing it's applying the function, which is its first argument, to each of the elements in the list, which is its second argument, in turn creating a new list of type B, and it's going to have, of course, the same length. So all I did was, oops, where am I? 
all I did was map parse message, which has a type. Oops. Parse message has type string to log message. So map parse message. Well, here, here's the type signature of map. Um, in terms of strings and log messages. So it takes a function from string to log message and a list of strings and applies that function to each of the strings and returns a list of log messages. Pretty simple. So The map parse message is going to have type list of string to list of log oops message and then of course map parse message on the list of strings like the one I get from line stir gives me a list of log message which is the type of the function. So there you have it. That's what MAP does, and it is very simple and very useful. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.